Welcome. Um, we're here to thinking inside the box, using and controlling an Oracle AI. Well, what is an Oracle AI? First of all, it's a super intelligent AI. What's that? Well, a super intelligent AI is basically an AI that's better than human at anything. Um, its abilities are above human in all domains. The, it's a superset of any given human. Uh, more interestingly, its abilities are a superset of any committee of humans. Now, there are lots of discussions as to how likely possible or soon superintelligent AIs might arise. All that I'm asking you to assume uh, for the purpose of this talk is that they're not certain to be impossible. And also, that they're not certain to be in the far, far future. When you, when you bring up superintelligent AI to people and mention that there could be risks, after a while, uh, back and forth in the conversation, the same solution will inevitably come up, and that is box it. Uh, what is boxing is you put the uh, AI inside a box uh, and you can only interact with us with texts, uh, with, by text interface. This is what, uh, by, and, and by answering our questions, this is what we normally refer to as an Oracle AI. Now, this is a security precaution. As with any security precautions, it's fair to ask three questions. Is it a useful precaution? Is it enough? Is it even close to enough? Well, before even thinking about that, there's one important thing you have to realize about um, uh, AI, is that we should resist the temptation to anthropomorph anthropomorphize them. Uh, AIs are not human, they don't think like humans, they don't have the same human strengths and weaknesses. And if we anthropomorphize them, we will get, get led astray completely. Oh, what the hell, let's do it anyway. A possible idea of how smart uh, such an AI could be is a committee with Edison, Einstein, George Soros, Bill Clinton, Oprah, Plato, Goebbels, Steve Jobs, and Bernie Madoff, all in the committee, all working together with their own private internet, working at thousands and thousands of times human speed. Maybe they have a subjective year to think of every single one of their answers. Now, this is an AI constructed just from slinging together human level intelligences. So a super intelligent AI is going to be much smarter than that. I hope you're no longer feeling quite so reassured that the AI is in a box so everything will be safe. But let's reverse the question. You're the AI. You're trapped in the box. You're able to speak, but not to move. Do you think you could get out of the box? Now, I want you to take 20 seconds right now to just imagine if you were trapped like this, if you had the abilities referred to in the previous slide, how would you go about convincing or tricking or trapping the gatekeepers to let you out. So, starting now. Okay, I hope you came up with ingenious solutions. They're always, they're always quite interesting. One experiment that was done was by Eliezer Yukowski. He decided that he would play the role of the AI inside a box and interact with a gatekeeper, someone who was supposed to keep it inside. Um, in the real world, they were interacting in a, a text channel, and the gatekeeper would be rewarded with $10 if uh, Yukowski didn't convince them to let the AI out of the box. He ran the experiment five times, and in three of them, he convinced them to let him out. So I think it's safe to say that if an actual human being can convince uh, someone to let them out of the box, a super intelligent AI is probably capable of doing it as well. 
Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but how bad could it be if the Oracle did escape? Well, first of all, it's a being of extraordinary high intelligence. We have failed to contain it when it was boxed. Oops. It now has access to the social, digital, and physical resources of the whole outside world. Double oops. I think the first default assumption is that the future will be what the AI wishes. It has the super intelligence. It can constrain the future in the direction that it wants. In a thousand years, the future will be what the AI wants it to be. Um, and nothing will remain unless the AI has a use for it. So as a consequence of this, the second default assumption is that unless the AI has been imprinted with nearly all human values, then there'll be a likely genocide of the human race. Now, this doesn't mean the AI will go out to kill us all. It might just have some very badly thought out uh, motivations such as keep humans safe and happy. In which case, it will bury us under the crust in concrete coffins under constant heraldry. And anything we can do to try and stop it from doing that will be brushed aside because this is interfering with its uh, vital mission. So that's what I said. This. Unless we've got all the human values, the human race as we now know it will go extinct. There might be something surviving, uh, but it won't be humans as we know it. But as I said, this is somewhat controversial and I don't want to spend too much time on it. Let's go back to boxing. This, I've shown you how hard it is to box, so the question is, so why box? Well, first of all, because precautions help. You put locks on doors, even if people can still kick them down. Second, is that it's strictly easier than independent AI. This might not be immediately obvious, but say you have different um, countries, different cultures, different ideologies, they might want they will all want something different from an AI that goes out into the world and does stuff. The communists might want their AI to be in equality. Um, the North Koreans might want their AI to spread North Korea across the world, etc., etc. But all of them will agree on what they want from an oracle, that it stay put and answer questions. So in this way, an oracle AI is strictly easier. And lastly, it allows for supplemental methods of control. Okay, we put it in the box, this isn't enough. What can we do to make sure it is enough? Well, there's various boxing methods that we've addressed in our paper. Um, the most obvious is first capability control. We restrict what it can do. Second is motivational control. And lastly, checks and balances. We've come up with a variety of different methods in our paper, as you can see here. And for those interested in looking into any of them, I strongly encourage them to look at our paper. In fact, for those who aren't interested, I also strongly encourage them to look at our paper. Now, um, capability control is the usual idea one thinks about. Take your AI, put it in a box, put the box in a Faraday cage, put an inert gas in the Faraday cage, get lasers ready to shoot at it if it misbehaves constrain its input channel so it doesn't get much in, constrain its output channel so it doesn't get much out. Now, all of these precautions are sensible and useful, uh, but they don't help against the AI using social engineering. Basically, if we wanted to answer our questions, every single answer that it gives is a chance for it to manipulate it. So the more we use it, the more vulnerable we become. And these don't help uh, with that aspect of now, the other aspect is checks and balances, which all revolve around catching the AI misbehaving in some sense. Um, you can either put a trap, do not eat this apple, or do not touch this water, um, and disconnect it if it does. Or you can do more sophisticated things with multiple AIs and shelling points. Um, all of these revolve around tricking a super intelligence uh, being. Um, so I wouldn't really put too much weight on these. Now, motivation and control, probably our best idea. Now, I'm going to break with the general tone of, um, of 
this session by announcing that we have some good news here. First of all, AIs are not subject to corruption. AIs are not subject to feeling resentment about how they're treated. In fact, AIs are generally immune to specific human failings unless we foolishly program them in. The point is that AIs will not think as humans. They're not vulnerable in the same way as humans are. They're vulnerable in different ways. So just be, if we put an AI in a box and we want it to like staying in the box, then it won't feel resentment and try and get out of the box because that's not what its motivations are. So that's the good news. Now the challenges. It's basically a question of reverse ethics. We have a vague idea of what we want the AI to do. Stay in the box, don't kill us. Uh, but we want to design the AI's ethics in order to ensure that. We also want to check that it implements the ethics that we've designed. And there's a certain tension between those two, between ethics that we know will result in good behaviors and ethics that we can check are well implemented in the AI. Um, specifically, these methods of control are divided into three. Black box motivational control, such as reinforcement learning, rule-based motivational control, which is the standard approach for programming, and utility-based motivational control. In AI theory, these are examples of these three methods. And the tension between implementation and consequences is basically this arrow, with the one at the top having the clearest consequences and the one at the bottom having the easiest implementation. Now, for instance, what we would use these things are for defining key concepts, such as space and time. If we can't, if space and time are meaningless to our um, oracle, then we have no chance of restricting its motivation in any sensible way. Black box method would be you train it on ticks of a clock and hope it makes the right generalization. Uh, rule based, you'd actually program this in tediously and try and look at every special case. Uh, we also have wanted to know things such as human beings, what a human being is, why we don't have four arms and legs, what death is, and especially for an oracle, what the truth is. Now, the great advantage of this approach, I say, is you can add extra conditions on it. I've given you sort of motivational means of control, but there are lots of little tricks that we can add on top that provide extra layers of security. Two of them that I have come up with myself are proxy measures of human survival, where you connect the AI to something like the Dow Jones, uh, the volume of sewage pumped through London every day, or the volume of phone calls. And you, take, uh, you ask it to ensure that this, this measure doesn't get too far out of whack. The idea being that if the AI tries to take over, um, one of these is going to go wrong. This is an indirect method of keeping it controlled. There's lots of problems with it, I know, but it is an extra precaution that you can layer on. Another example, utility-based motivation control calculated indifference. Again, look at this in our paper or on my own paper on the FHI website. Uh, the basic idea is to make it completely indifferent between two situations. Um, the example there is we make it indifferent between whether explosives that we put inside it will detonate or not. So it won't try and disarm them when it starts expanding to take over, maybe giving us some time to intervene. Another thing that's very sensible for an oracle is to make it indifferent to the consequences of its own answers. So that, um, so that it doesn't think, but if I give this, then they'll do this to me, or something of that nature. There's a lot of useful uh, little tricks that this could be uh, put to. But, in conclusion, super intelligent AIs are dangerous. Control methods are progressing slower than AI. Trust me on this. I know virtually all the methods of control, and there's a long way to go. Oracle AIs are somewhat safer, but still not safe. And we need lots of progress. Progress in machine ethics, decision theory, philosophy, handling of uncertainty and other similar issues. So to paraphrase Terry Pratchett, well, okay, how good are you, what can you control Oracle AI? I'm pretty good. Get better quick. That is what we need to do. 
Now, but for the future progress, the good news is that most of the ideas on controlling aerial airs have been created by people in this very room in the course of the year. So though there is a lot of need for progress, there's also a lot of potential for progress. And in conclusion, Thank you. Any questions?